Everybody say, prayer, prayer. stimulates the Holy Spirit's activity. All right, so Ross and I were walking along through the neighborhood, praying for houses, praying for businesses, and then it kind of dawned on both of us simultaneously <laughs> that we were standing in the middle of, of a gay bar's parking lot. And then the guy said, hey, are you guys together? <laughs> and I said, yeah, no, no, we're not, yeah, we, we are, but we aren't, you know, it's, now, here's what's interesting about that. Two or three days later, I was downtown with a staff member, and the thought went through me, I wonder how many people will be at that place in the middle of the day. And as we drove by, a man from our church came walking out the door. And I pulled the car over, jumped out, and I said, hey, brother, and named him. I said, I said uh, don't worry, uh, it's okay. We're just here to help you in the name of the Lord. He dropped his head and started sobbing. We got him in the car. They walked him through a process that informed the wife and child. And now I might report to you that marriage is totally healed. This guy's steady. This guy's stable. This guy's doing great. He really got a powerful deliverance. When you were up there in front of that church, how come you didn't say, I have issues with my sexuality. I have issues with drugs. I have these weaknesses. Why didn't yeah. you admit that then? Um, well, I, I didn't think I could because I was supposed to be a representative voice for 30 million people. I was leading a church of 14,000. There were all kinds of wonderful people looking to me for leadership, and I thought it was my responsibility to just get it worked out. How did all of this start? Uh, I did some same-sex sex play when I was in the seventh grade, and then all that blew up when I was 50. And I had to analyze myself. Am I a heterosexual, a homosexual, gay, straight, bisexual? What are you, Ted Aggard? But I've wrestled with it and fought with it and argued with it. My sexual addiction was no different than, than somebody with struggling with alcoholism. And I know many alcoholics that preach, don't drink, don't get around booze, don't have anything to do with it. And then they lose their sobriety and then they start again. You were given a choice. You could have gone gay. But you've actually been forced to choose between being gay and being evangelical, and you're choosing being evangelical. Well, I am who I am. I'm an evangelical. And I have struggled and continue from time to time struggle with same-sex attraction. But I was never a hateful preacher. I was never an angry preacher. I was never an anti-gay preacher other than saying that God's... And I still believe this, even though I'm a sinner and even though I'm weak. God's best plan for human beings is for men and women to unite together and children's best opportunity to grow up in a healthy way is to grow up in the home with their biological parents. The agreement had to do with his participating in a process of spiritual restoration that would um, be aimed at returning him holistically to uh, health and wholeness as a man and to holiness as a Christian. When an arm is broken, you have to put a cast on it. And it may not feel good, but the only way that thing's going to heal is restriction. That's what Ted needs now. Straight up, hardcore restriction where he comes face to face with the reality of the choices he was making. Churches are not just spiritual bodies. They are corporations, they're businesses. And you were bad for business. Well, I think if they would have been chess players instead of checkers players, they would have realized that I am their business. Somebody struggling with sin is the purpose that the church is on earth. The church is on earth here to help people with their sin problem. Controversy. Many parents seem content okay, to have so their kids encouraged to take drugs and have indiscriminate sex. He used to be on TV all the time. Now you just sit here and watch it. That's right. It's been three months now since the Reverend Ted Haggard rocked the evangelical world with his very public fall from grace, and now he's resurfaced. In an email to his former congregation, Haggard, who lost his job in the wake of a sex and drug scandal, said he had completed three weeks of counseling in Phoenix. The treatment was overseen by four ministers, one of whom told the Denver Post that Haggard is now convinced he is, quote, completely heterosexual. I have to start the show uh, with some sad news. Sad news for uh, the gays. 
as they're referred to. <laughs> Unfortunately, they've lost one of their own, Ted Haggard. The Denver Post is reporting that he is now completely heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Because I'm 100% heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Glory, how he blew. Yeah. Once there was a preacher by the name of Ted Haggard who stumbled from the path, or you might even say staggered. He was one in a million, or more aptly, one in ten. <laughs> Some folks say he put the men in ah, man. Why did you say that you're completely heterosexual? I didn't say that. Tim Ralph said that, pastor of Larkspur Church. Why did he say that? Because he's a nice guy. He was trying to be friendly. And so, <laughs> so that's, that's a why. very charitable way of putting it. They haven't been faithful to you. Why do you still defend them? The scripture says that a leader should live a life above reproach. And I obviously didn't. Now I've lost my career. I've lost my social standing. I've lost all my positions. I've lost all my influence. I've lost my trustworthiness. I've lost all of that. And the one that's always faithful is Jesus. Dear God, I have sinned. And I need a Savior. You said that if I would confess my sin, that you would forgive me. And I believe you, Lord. I confess my sin. And I now give my life to you. An unusual twist tonight in the gay sex scandal involving Pastor Ted Haggard. Today, the man who says Haggard paid him for sex and drugs paid a visit to New Life Church in Colorado Springs as research he's doing for a book about the scandal. And the book again, I had to say something, the art of Ted Haggard's fall. Uh, congratulations, and uh, we hope you sell a million copies. Every gay person is a victim of Ted Haggard, Pat Robertson, James Dobson, and all the hate that they spew. I'm impressed. I want to tell you that. Mike Jones back in the spotlight tonight, this time as an actor. This is one moment of peace and a long chain of days. It's also possible to see this play as Jones trying to milk his seedy celebrity. If we're not opportunists, then what future do we have to try new things? What happens from here? What do you do? I've also been approached saying, Mike, you need to get up out of politics. Um, so I'm not ruling anything out. I'm worthless at this point. I never made big money. I never became a millionaire or anything in the church. What's been the worst financially for you since New Life? What's been the worst financial? Well, we're just spiraling down. Just trying to find people that want to pay off their mortgages super fast. This is the greatest program I've ever seen to help people pay off their houses, actually own them. So how many door hangers have you hung? Uh, hundreds, maybe thousands. And how many calls have you gotten? Not one. This is the Haggard's three-car garage at the hotel. Their car, the scooter, and the U-Haul. Yeah. Not a bad setup. And they're not bad. They're all residual from, of course, the blessings of old, but um, we're using that up. <laughs> the smile's yeah. back on his face. That's good. Yeah. So you're living at this hotel, we're and living. all your worldly possessions are in this U-Haul. Right. Everything which you don't even here. lock. We don't lock it, but it's fine. Nobody's stealing it. See? All of our stuff is in there. See? There's our stuff. Yeah. Are you a fool or are you a Christian? I think I'm still naive. I still see the best in people. And I'm still heartbroken when people don't see the best in me. How does your family feel about staying in this hotel? It's just a fact of life. We don't have feelings about where we stay and things like that. We don't even talk about it anymore. It's just the fact of life. We don't talk about how people feel about it. We don't talk about how people are reacting to it. 
we all know this is the fact of life. So Alex and Elliot and all of us were up there studying in the same room last night and they don't even talk about not having a private place to study or a desk or stuff like that. And we just do it. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. I'm going to class them in their Masters of Counseling program. And the other students are mostly girls that just got out of college and want to be counselors. I kind of help them deal with their father issues. <laughs> class, is going, class is hard. I haven't been in school since I graduated from... I got my college degree in 1978. Everything's different. The way research is done on the internet is different. Nobody uses the duodecimal system anymore. Do people in your class recognize you? Yeah. What was funny, I was standing here and uh, picking up a sandwich or something, and a lady comes up and she says, I know this, I don't want to embarrass you or anything, but you look just like Ted Haggard. And I laughed and I said, well, I am Ted Haggard. And she said, oh, what class are you teaching? And I said, well, I'm here taking a class, actually. So why did you pick psychology? Well, because after my crisis, it was the, the therapists were the ones that gave me answers. And I thought to myself, okay, so, all these years, I've thought I was a dog and worthless and an awful person. And then I sat down and talked with some experienced therapists and they're able to say, oh, we can help walk you through that. And so I'm thinking to myself, I want to be able to help people like that. Okay, well, have fun in class. Thank you. bizarre twist in the Ted Haggard story. Former New Life Church pastor Ted Haggard will soon live with former criminals, prostitutes, and recovering drug and alcohol abusers. You sound kind of upset today. I am a little upset today. Gail and I volunteered to move with our two high school boys into a halfway house to serve. That turned into a huge deal. It was in the papers, it was on the news. Haggard also said that he and his wife need money. He said it would be a blessing if people sent donations for them to a private mailbox in Scottsdale or to a nonprofit in Colorado Springs. So you sent out an email to some friends asking for some financial help and it ended up in the paper. I wrote to 15 friends, 15, and that had written to me and said, hey, if you ever do anything where we could sponsor you, we want to do that. So I wrote to those friends and they'd said, and we have some friends who may want to pitch in too. So I put a line in there, hey, if you want, if your friends, if you want to send this to your friends, that's fine. Former pastor Ted Haggard is under scrutiny once again by the church that he founded. Anything that's in the media becomes bigger than life. My life doesn't affect anybody now, but if I, if I do anything that raises my head above, way below the norm, then, then the media acts like it's a big deal. At the church in Phoenix, Haggard now calls home. Parishioners are divided over the issue. The word repent doesn't mean just saying, you know, I'm sorry. He truly, repentance is like turning your life around. You don't go out and ask people to pay your way. Get a job. Mr. Haggard's got enough money of his own, and I don't think he needs to go out there soliciting. Now everybody knows who you are, and it's ruining well, your it, life. Well, it was just another bubble of hostility, and I got hate mail from it. And Come on, Haggard, get a job. Well, I mean, that's easy to say. It's just weird to me that it's been a year, and you're still living with this every day. Oh, yeah. And it's because... See, the reason I kept my personal struggle a secret is because I feared that my friends would reject me and abandon me and kick me out and that the church would exile me and excommunicate me. And that happened and more. <laughs>